I want to share something with you that's caused a lot of confusion and controversy in the body of Christ for a long time, and actually it still does. I want to talk to you about faith, and you might be thinking, wow, that doesn't sound very controversial. Well, just hang on for a minute or two and hear me out. You know, true faith is observable. In Mark chapter 2, verse 5, the gospel writer shares this story about a disabled man who was lowered through the roof of a house where Jesus was speaking. The entrance to the house was completely blocked. You know, people had come to hear Jesus teach and preach. So the disabled man had his friends lower him through the roof on a stretcher. And when this was going on, midway through Jesus speaking, the scripture says Jesus, looking up, saw their faith. Now, Jesus could physically observe their faith in action. You know, you wouldn't go to all of this trouble of carrying your disabled friend up onto a rooftop, ripping the roof apart of somebody else's house and lowering your friend through this gaping hole if you didn't believe that they were, you know, going to get healed. So what they believed in their hearts, this hope of being healed by Jesus, could now be seen in the actions that they were taking. And the fact that they could be seen, the fact that they were observable, is exactly what the Bible calls faith. That's why it says Jesus could see their faith. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 11, verse 1, the verse tells us exactly what faith is. It says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. You know, you can't see what somebody believes in their heart, but you can see what they believe by the actions they take. Like this disabled man, you could see his faith. You could see that he believed if he could get to Jesus, he'd be healed. Faith will give substance, tangibility to what you're hoping for. Now, here's the difference. Hope can't be seen, but faith can. You know, I might know you, I might know you really well, but I can't see what you're hoping for in your heart. But I can see your faith if you're in faith. I can see what you believe by the actions you take. And I think a lot of us have been thinking we're in faith over a particular issue in our lives. When we're not, we've been in hope. Now, look, why is this important? Let's look at this in the context of healing for a moment. You know, if you study some of the notable healings performed by Jesus, he will often attribute the healing to their faith. In Matthew chapter 9, verse 22, woman with the issue of blood, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Over in Matthew 9, 29, uh, to the two blind men, Jesus says, according to your faith, let it be done unto you. Over in Mark chapter 10, verse 52, to blind Bartimaeus, Jesus says, your faith has made you well. Some more scriptures in Luke 7, uh, to the simple woman, Jesus says, your faith has saved you. One more, Luke 17, verse 19, to the healed leper, Jesus says, arise, Go your way, your faith has made you well. And there's lots of other occasions in scripture where this happened. Now, what preceded these events? Why why did Jesus respond by saying those words? In every case, the person took certain steps. The person with the sickness made an effort. They acted on what they believed and came to Jesus. You know, if they'd just had a hope and a belief but never acted on it, that wouldn't be faith. You could say it this way, faith is the actionable part of what you believe the Bible says. If this disabled man had just sat at home, never acted on, you know, thinking Jesus could heal me and just stayed in his house and never took any action, you know, the miracle would never have happened. It wouldn't have come to pass. But the disabled man acted on what he believed. And that's what we call faith. A belief that is acted on or made evident. Now, remember what the scripture says. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Okay, so why am I sharing this? You know, I know there'll be people listening to this who need healing in their bodies, and you might have been hoping for a very long time. But Jesus Jesus didn't say, your hope has made you well. And Hebrews 11.1 1 doesn't say, hope is the evidence of things not seen. Jesus said, your faith has made you well. The scripture says, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And I want you to see the difference between simply being in hope and acting in faith because this could be the difference between you staying sick and being healed. Over in the book of James, chapter two, verse 17, it says, faith, if it does not have works, is dead. Dead faith is a belief that has no evidence, no proof, it's unobservable. For faith to be true faith, it must have accompanying works. If your faith has no evidence, no accompanying works, then actually it's not true faith. So how could you tell whether or not you're simply in hope or acting in faith. Well, let's look at Noah. He's a brilliant example. The Bible says in Hebrews eleven seven, 
that by faith Noah, being divinely warned of things not yet seen, moved with godly fear and prepared the ark for the saving of his household. You see, God speaks a word to Noah. Now, can that word be observed? No. It's in the heart of Noah. It's a warning from God to Noah. But Noah believes this word. How do we know he believes this word? Because he acts on the word and he constructs the ark. By faith, Noah builds the ark. We can tell that Noah believed that word because now there's this physical evidence, this proof, this great big boat that Noah's built. You know, we couldn't see it before, but now we can because he acted on the word. And if you're truly acting in faith, like Noah, there'll be some evidence some physical proof of what you've believed, what you've hoped for in your life, because faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now, look, you might have had a word from God about something specific, something you've been hoping for. But if you never get into faith, if you never act on that word, then that hope will just remain a hope. It won't become a reality. And a lot of the times, believers, I think we're just hoping. When in reality, if you ever want to see the fulfilment of that promise, and if you want to see it come to pass, you need to be in faith. And that's one of the biggest reasons we're not seeing promises manifest. Until we start acting in faith, that promise will remain nothing more than a hope. Let's look at the woman with the issue of blood. She had a hope. You know, she believed, if I could just get to Jesus, I'd be healed. But she went beyond hope. The scripture says she pressed through the crowd and touched the hem of Jesus' garment. And what did Jesus respond by saying? Daughter, your faith has made you whole. And this is the difference between hope and faith being a doer or a hearer of the word. You know, a doer is somebody who hears and then acts on what they hear, what they believe. But here is just somebody who never does. Hope is always in the future. But faith takes what you're hoping for, what you're believing for, and makes it a reality. It gives it substance. And the quickest way to get from hope to faith is to start acting on what you believe. You know, hope is very, very important. You can't have faith for something you never hoped for. Hope is the catalyst for faith. Faith is very different to just believing or hoping. Faith requires action. Faith makes things happen. You know, so it's no longer just a vision in your heart, but it's a physical reality in the present. And this is exactly why Paul writes in Romans 8, 24, hope that is seen is not hope. Why would you continue to hope for something you've already, you can already see something you've already received? You know, Sarah and I recently did a set of podcasts. They're on our website. If you want to check them out, it's chapelsong.com. And uh, we looked at the process of faith and how faith works. And as much as I don't like distilling things like faith into steps and stages and processes, it does actually give us a bit of a framework to help our understanding. So faith works like this. First, you hear and then you believe this word. You have this hope in your heart and then you confess what you believe and then you act on what you've confessed. And that's when you see a miracle. Now, look, I need to add just a little caveat here. For as much as we can learn about the disabled man in Mark, um, chapter 2 or the woman with the issue of blood our situation is very different to theirs in the sense that we're on the, the other side of the finished work of the cross you know we're not looking to Jesus for a healing we're not trying to get healing out of Jesus we need to understand what the scripture says in the fact that he's already provided for our healing he's already given healing to us and if you're not clear on that here's where you need to start read Isaiah 53 read 1st Peter 2 24 Ephesians 1 19 Ephesians 1 3 God has already given you what you need for this life, but you must appropriate it by faith. And if you're begging God for something he's already done, then actually you can't be in faith. You're not trusting what the word says. So firstly, it's important you renew your mind according to what the Bible says, and then you start acting on what you believe. Romans 10, 17 says, faith comes by hearing and by hearing the word of God. So take the word of God, meditate on the word of God, start to confess what you're believing for, but don't stop there, start acting on what you're confessing. And it's when you get to acting on what you believe, i.e. taking faith, that you're giving substance to the things you've been hoping for. That's when the miraculous can happen.